Did you know Christians can have demons? I decided to do a standing share because I have more freedom to move. And I've noticed that I like to move when I talk. I like to use my hands. I like to pace back and forth. Sometimes I'm just kind of like moving, moving. Actually, I've noticed that when I move, things actually flow better. And it's funny because my husband, when he talks on the phone, he's always pacing back and forth. Like he's totally like just walking. He'll walk throughout the whole house. I always thought it was so funny, but there's something to it. Movement causes movement. And I think it causes our brain to be like, oh, we're moving. What are we doing? Where are we going? What are we going to say? I remember being in youth with a mission and even arguing for the belief that Christians could have demons because of the Lord's prayer. I felt like the Lord had highlighted that, like our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and deliver us from evil. And he was talking to the disciples on how to pray. So it was like, okay, we can have demons. Okay, but they probably have no control and they have no power unless you're living a really bad life of sin um, and you've done all kinds of things wrong and you're totally in disobedience to God. Well, I was wrong. <laughs> so later on, so that was 1998 and then um, 2009, I was just continually hitting a wall in my relationship with God. And I just kept crying out to him. I was praying. I was fasting. I was reading teaching books. I was just seeking answers. Lord, what is going on? I know there's more. I know there's more. I had a dream. And in the dream, we were going to go pray for this woman who lived in her own little house. Uh, it was all tidy, neat little house. She was probably about in her 70s. And she lived on Spirit Street. And we came, my friend and I, my friend Mary, back from Marysville, um, we went to go pray for her. So this is in my dream. And we come into the house, we're like, we're here to pray for you. And she goes, oh, that's wonderful. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes, pray for me. And she goes, but everyone's prayed for me and nothing ever works. But thank you so much for coming to pray for me. Please come in. So I'm thinking, oh no, this is not going to go good. We're not going to get anything done here. So we go, we start praying and it's not happening. And she's like, thank you very much. You guys have a nice day. Thanks for trying. And I take out a piece of paper and I draw a half pig, half elephant thing. And I show her. And she starts crying. And then we end up rebuking these spirits. And the pig represented unclean spirit. And the elephant represented religious spirit. And it was because when a baby elephant is a baby, they can tie it to a stake and make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. And then when it becomes a big old powerful strong elephant, it still won't go anywhere because it's so tied into this belief that it's little, has no power. Just listen to what the person told you to do. Stay in that small space, stay quiet, stay tied up, stay controlled, and don't go anywhere. <laughs> well, I woke up from the dream. I called my friend Mary. Mary! Oh my gosh, I had this dream. It really feels powerful. I feel like God's trying to show me something. Maybe you and I are going to pray for people and we're going to teach them about the Holy Spirit and they're going to be free. And she's like, yes, I think you are correct. And can I come visit you? 
And I was like, yeah, sure. A few days later, and um, we're talking and we're chatting at lunch and she's like, kind of, I noticed she's kind of like tiptoeing a little bit in her talking. She's being really careful as we're like discussing the dream and whatever. And I'm like, this is not Mary, what's going on? So she's like, so Jessica, sometimes people don't really like when I tell them what I am interpreting. And so I just want you to know, like, this is my interpretation. You take it or leave it. And uh, I'm like, no, go ahead. I don't care. I just want freedom. So she goes, you're right about the whole dream. And that person represented you. <laughs> I was like, oh. Okay, sure. Maybe I have a religious spirit and I had no idea. It's possible. And so she's like, well, okay, awesome. Your response is amazing. Uh, when do you wanna pray? So she's like, I think you need to fast first. So maybe we'll fast tomorrow. And then at the end of the day, we'll do it. So that night we're chatting. Then suddenly we feel the Holy Spirit in the room, like just strong presence of God. And I'm like, I think it's now. I think we should go pray. She's like, okay. So we go in my living room, start praying. Oh, before that, I had asked Holy Spirit and God, like, Lord, please, if this is a demon, if there's a religious spirit demon, please let it manifest because I need to know this is not just me and this is not just her making this up. I really need to know without a doubt that I could have a demon. <laughs> Be careful what you ask for. So anyway, sure enough, she starts praying. I start manifesting. I'm coughing. I'm choking. This thing does not want to let me go. It's familiar. It's self-righteousness. It is religion to its core. This is 2009. And she goes through the whole process. I'm just afraid I'm not going to be any different. I'm just afraid I'm going to be the same when we're done. And... She's like, yeah, I understand. That's unbelief. <laughs> so then we started going after unbelief. And it was so amazing. At, at the end, when we were all done, I felt so clean. I felt so pure. For the first time that I can remember, I understood that God paid the price for me. Jesus paid the price for me. It had nothing to do with what I earned, my righteous acts, my amazing Christianity, my good girl tendencies, kaput, nothing to do with me. So I was just like, wow, Jesus, you're so good. I felt like a pipe that had just been totally cleanse, purified, and I could feel the flow of revelation and understanding and scriptures were just suddenly making sense to me. And I was thinking, Lord, how did this spirit get in? How did it even get a hold? I didn't even know I could have a demon. I thought I was so holy and righteous that a demon would never be able to have access to me. Well, turns out he led me to the scripture. Knowledge puffs up. Faith without works is dead. I had a lot of knowledge, a lot of training, a lot of teachings, everything I needed. So I thought I knew the rules. I'm a really good rule keeper. I knew what the Bible said. I knew the scriptures well. And somehow the enemy convinced me that I had earned my righteousness. Ugh. So I was like, okay, God, how do I never let this come back? This is crazy. I can't believe this is true, but I felt so good and so free. I was like, I don't even care. Just show me how to stay free. Showed me the other scripture where you come and you look in a mirror and you walk away and you forget what you saw. And again, the knowledge that puffs up and faith without actions is dead. So do the, you know, faith, step out in those things you believe in. Just because you believe it doesn't mean you're living it. Just because you believe and agree with what the preacher's saying doesn't mean you're transformed. Oh my gosh, I thought, I believe some of these things that Bill Johnson's saying. Oh, I totally agree, 100%, yes. But then 
I didn't know that my brain was agreeing, but my heart and my spirit had not been transformed in some of the things that I was just like, this is the right way. This is how you should believe. I ended up writing a book. That's the book that I shared on the last one that um, 9,976,665 easy steps to becoming the perfect Christian because that was what I believed was if I kept the rules, if I did it all right, then I for sure was a good Christian. So much more than that. So the book is about me coming out of religion and into relationship. And I just wanted to share that with you. If you are struggling and you just feel like you've been stuck in this kind of dry, um, a little bit boring, works-oriented relationship with God, you might be struggling with some of this. God knows your heart. He know, He's the only one that knows the depth of what is in our heart. So we need him to reveal the heart matters. And I am so thankful. He gave me a dream and he put a friend in it that I called her and she brought the other piece. That's another huge part. We need each other. I could have like just gone to God and I only had half of the interpretation. I didn't know that religious person represented me. It took a friend to speak into my life and I had to humble myself and let her speak into my life. And that's huge. Like it took me a long time to be in that place that I could receive that because if you're so self-righteous and religious, you think no one should have to speak into your life because you should have it all together. And if someone else has to tell you what you're doing wrong or show you your blind spots, then you're not being a very good Christian, blah, 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 blah. So there is so much more in Christianity than the rules, so much more. And I guess I'll leave you with that.